Welcome to Well Traveled Life with Jonathan Jennifer. So first thing in Scotland. <laughs> Yay! We made it to Edinburgh. Literally just arrived. We checked into our hotel, which is called the Orinco. The Oroco Pier. So for our first couple of days, we are at the Oroco Pier Hotel, which is literally right on the water in South Queens Ferry. It's about a 15 minute drive from the airport out to South Queens Ferry. And South Queens Ferry is just a tiny little town with beautiful bridges. This is the cruise port though. So if you're coming by cruise, then, and actually there's a Holland America ship in the background, um, then you'll come here and it's a tender port and you can get to Edinburgh and it's probably a 20 minute drive to Edinburgh. Not terrible. And there's trains that will take you into the city center. So you don't have to drive a car if you don't want to. Um, this is like coming home though. This is really fun to be back to a place that we've been. I think we've been here every year now that we've been coming to Scotland. So three years in a row, this is pretty fun. It's a beautiful hotel, very small, with a restaurant and a pub attached. I'm not sure if we're gonna be doing anything tonight besides going to bed, but uh, it's been a long day of travel and we did it, we've made it, we're here. The room itself is large and comfortable, but what stood out was the view from that window. And the bathroom also was a win. It had a large tub, again, a window that overlooked the water and had views of the rail bridge, it included a really nice towel warming bar, obviously the toilet. It had a double sink vanity with a really nicely lit mirror. And behind the door, there is a separate shower. So just a really spacious, luxurious room. And it's actually not in Edinburgh. We're in South Queens Ferry. And South Queens Ferry is the port for Edinburgh. So if you were on a cruise ship coming to Edinburgh, this is where you would be. The tenders that are at Haas Pier right behind us. The tender service ran throughout the night. There's a Holland America ship, and there's a pier that this hotel and pub are, is very close to. Uh, literally, it's the first sort of building on the other side of it. Good morning. This morning we're standing on the, I guess it's the pier dock. I think it's the Oroco Pier. I'm taking that guess. <laughs> and we got up early, went out drowning on the pier. The central landmark of South Queensbury is the clock tower. It's a white hurled building with Roman numerals for the clock face, sitting at the center of the high street and rising four stories above the cobbled road below. Originally built in 1720, it was renovated in 1877 and 78 to commemorate the Golden Jubilee of Queen Victoria. There are two bells in the tower. The first dates from 1694 and the second is from 1723. Although you can't go inside the clock tower, we were able to get above it and show you what the views would look like if you could. This is the River Forth, the Forth of Fife, and these are the bridges that cross the river. The bridge you see in the background, and I think, Jen, uh, the story was there's a maybe a sister bridge, or it's a, very similar to a bridge somewhere maybe in the States, maybe I want to say Pennsylvania, very similar, but uh, built about the same time frame. That's a question for Justin. That is. It's got a couple of sister bridges, one in Pennsylvania and one in Australia. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> the iconic fourth bridge, which is the rail bridge used only for trains, was begun in 1886 and completed in 1889. It was the first bridge to be built of steel and is a cantilevered bridge. Over 4,000 people helped to build it, 63 died in the process, and over 26,000 entries of sickness and accidents were recorded during the build.
Baker and Fowler, the principal designers of the bridge, are pictured here demonstrating the concept of the cantilevered bridge. The fourth railway bridge held the record for 29 years as having the longest span. That's the area between the wide parts. It's what the cantilevers are holding up until the Quebec Bridge was built with an even longer span. But because of its history, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and continues to be in the top five longest cantilevered bridges in the world. Directly below the railway bridge lies Inch Garvey. This is a small island in the middle of the River Forth that has a long history. In 1491, King James IV licensed the island to John Dundas, who you're going to hear more about in our future travels. Dundas never built a castle there, but King James IV himself built one. During the 15 and 1600s, it was used as a castle, a prison, as well as a place of exile for the plague stricken. But in the 1870s, it took on a new life. Thomas Bush was hired to build both the Tay Bridge and this bridge across the Firth. The Tay Bridge collapsed in a disastrous event and Bush was terminated from the project across the Firth. But before being sacked, he had had foundations laid on Inch Garvey for the bridge he expected to build. Finally, after a new design and build team was hired, the island was actually extended and a pier was built, and it was used as the foundation for one of the cantilevers. Stones from the original castle were used for the bridge's caissons. Our hotel is uh, right in the opposite direction of this camera and at night we could see the trains, couldn't really hear them very loudly, it's not an issue. And uh, behind us in the other direction, I think Jen's going to pan suspension bridge. Suspension bridge, in, in, Golden in Gate style. style. Yeah. Although that obviously is much newer. In the 1920s and 30s, as the motor age was steadily advancing, the need for some kind of a bridge across the Forth became obvious. There was ferry service, and by the 1950s, they were ferrying over 800,000 vehicles and 1.5 million people a year across the River Forth. But it wasn't until 1956 that a bridge was finally planned and construction begun. The Forth Road Bridge is one of the world's most significant long span suspension bridges. It has a main span of 1,006 meters between the two towers. In 1964, when it was completed, it was the fourth longest bridge in the world of its type and the longest outside of the United States. It also significantly ended 800 years of the Queen's Ferry Service, as now cars could pass across the bridge and not have to take a ferry. Although the road bridge had a planned life of 120 years, growth and erosion put that in peril. With a capacity of 11 million vehicles per year, that was just not going to make it when in 2006, there were 23 million vehicles passing the bridge each year. In addition, inspections between 2003 and 2005 noted that there had been 8 to 10 percent loss of strength to the bridge cables due to corrosion that threatened closure of the bridge by 2019. Because no one could afford for the bridge to be closed for maintenance or restructuring, it was determined that a new bridge would be built. And the road bridge would become accessible only to buses, taxis, cyclists, and pedestrians. In 2012, construction began on this new cable-stayed structure with three towers. 
and when it was opened in 2017, it was the longest of its type in the world. It sits 683 feet above high tide, and the entire structure, including the approach viaducts, is 8,638 feet. The building of the bridge required 150,000 tons of concrete to be poured, 35,000 tons of steel, and 23,000 miles of cabling. This modern bridge was built to last with the latest conveniences and technology. Not only does it have a solid surface road allowing for smoother driving over the bridge, it also uses a thicker road surface with longer surface life and it can be machine laid, making it easier to replace. And similarly, the cables can be replaced with more ease than the fourth road bridge. It can be done as part of the normal maintenance and without having to close the bridge. A dehumidification system prevents corrosion. Although there are not any pedestrian walkways, there are hard shoulders that provide the flexibility to carry buses that might be displaced from the fourth road bridge during periods of high wind. The bridge deck carries two general lanes of traffic in each direction along with that hard shoulder, allowing for breakdowns, incidents, and any maintenance works to not interfere with the normal working of the bridge. Windshielding has allowed the bridge to remain open during periods of high winds, which are very common in the fourth estuary. On September 4th of 2017, it was to the day exactly 53 years after her Majesty Queen Elizabeth had opened the Fourth Road Bridge that she opened the Queen's Ferry Crossing Bridge. I think it is really unique that the country became the world's first destination to have three bridges spanning three centuries in one location. Anyway, we're happy to be here. We have just spent a day flying from Colleen to Dallas, from Dallas to London, layovers, and then and at Heathrow, because we were changing airports, we had to pick up our luggage. From Heathrow, we drove across town to City Airport, a much smaller regional airport, and took a flight here to what? Edinburgh. So we're well, welcome now to Edinburgh Airport, where the local time here is coming up to 540 in the evening. And it's actually, London City Airport's it looks like a regional airport and it sort of acts like a regional airport. They don't have airport lounges and security is really quick to go through. And you walk in the rain out onto the tarmac to climb the stairs up to your plane. But it's an international airport. We have flown to Copenhagen through there and, yeah. and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it's right in the heart of downtown London. So you're right it, in... It is convenient. It's quick to get in and quick to get uh -huh. out. Uh, uh -huh. Not a lot of frills, but... No, but... Anyway. But it gets you places. You mentioned that we had layovers at every... Yeah. We didn't have just layovers. We had late times. <laughs> every single one of our yeah. flights today mm -hmm. was delayed. So mm -hmm. that was a little bit frustrating. And But, you know, it, it's part of it. It's how you travel yeah. these days. And Those of you who may be interested, we flew here uh, on British Airways. We did. British Airways. They partner with American Airlines, I guess. It's part of the One World. If you're yeah. in, if you're in the points system, um, it's a One World airway. And we were able to fly on points, business class, and uh, that, that. I don't know if that'll warrant a separate video. If we have no. A, not the greatest experience we've ever had. Uh, the crew was fine, but. Uh, the layout of the plane and the way they've done it just is not my favorite. But yeah. uh, anyway. We have sort of this philosophy that we don't do negative reviews and we don't do, we don't complain on camera kind of yeah. thing. So. But we got to tell it like it is. But we're not dishonest, yeah. but silence is probably telling you something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Right. I'm going to be silent on British Airways right now. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, we were on a Hollow America ship. I'm not sure which one. It was, it was in the new Staten Sound. We had a tour that day that uh, you can find on our website. Our guide was Justin. From Share the Tea. And Justin has become such a good friend. You may have caught an interview we did with him because he came out to Texas to visit us. Yeah. 
Justin led a tour for some cruise ship passengers, and so he met us for drinks at the Ferry Tap, which is a really great local pub. But when you get value and, and views of the river there, you get the views of the, 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 the bridges. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We gotta do it. it. A pub patron stopped by our table and gave us some excellent dinner advice, and we ended up taking it. Hi, I'll give a wee phone just in case. Hi, hi. Uh, uh, and see if we've got a... Get in an hour or something like that. Hi. Yeah, I'll see what they say. Anyway, Thank guys, you so much. Nice to you. Hey, great talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll give a wee phone dinner at the boathouse which we thought was a spectacular meal. They had a great selection of tapas style small plates on a back patio on a beautiful evening with a fabulous view. And so in the next uh, week or so we're doing another tour yeah. to some of the outer islands here at the Outer Hebrides. Hebrides yeah. the, the one that you may have heard of is Lewis and Harris. It's the biggest, and it's actually one island with two names. You may be familiar with uh, Harris Tweed. Harris Tweed, yeah, comes from. Yeah, comes from. Pattern. Is this it? is a magical place. Day one. Day one. I will sleep well tonight. <laughs> Next stop is Enstruther, and we'll see you there.